I know you EV evangelists out there are going to say, well, you could have charged a lot cheaper if you'd been more organised. Well, you could have charged a lot cheaper if you've just charged at home like we do. I always charge my... I don't care, OK? These are actual statistics from an actual EV owner. Good afternoon. I am back from a weekend of road tripping. the back of a very busy week running around preparing for the practical classics restoration show my volvo 850 tdi has covered 1134 miles in the last week and i got to thinking would it have been cheaper for me to do that in an electric car and thankfully someone emailed me on sunday saying hi jeff i have run a hyundai kona ev for the last 12 months Here's a breakdown of how far I've gone and what it's cost. So let's take a look. The Hyundai Kona, they have done 4,546 miles in the last year. And this is off of an app. So they've basically just sent me the stats. 4,546 miles in a year. The total charging time for that with Shell, Swarco and Charge Hyundai and a little bit at home, £859.45, right? I know you EV evangelists out there are going to say, well, you could have charged a lot cheaper if you'd been more organised. Well, you could have charged a lot cheaper if you've just charged at home like we do. I always charge my... I don't care, OK? These are actual statistics from an actual EV owner. Not only that, this is someone who's on a motability scheme. And I'm going to dig into this in a video later in the week because people on the motability scheme should not be being pushed into electric vehicles like they are. Anyway... That's a conversation for another day. And if you know about motability cars or you have one or you have an opinion, then now's a good time to email me, jeffbicecars at gmail.com. Ready for that video that's coming up later this week. Back to the running costs. £859.45 pence spent on charging to go 4,546 miles in a year gives you a cost per mile of 19 pence. But the best bit, that is a charging time of 42 hours so let's just see if i could have done that in my volvo right i put 30 pounds of diesel in in worcester i then ran around got prepped for the nec went and bought the slide that i had for the show lots of running around buying stationery and going to printers and all that sort of stuff then I put £60 in in Worcester when we drove north to Northumberland. And then I put another £60 in on the return journey. I covered for my £150 of diesel 1,134 miles. However, I've got 210 miles left in the tank. That gives me a price per mile of 11 pence. Remember the EV was 19 pence. So that is significantly cheaper than the EV. However, the EV had a charge time of 42 hours. I think my total fill time, because we haven't really been messing around, we haven't really stopped at any service stations, we haven't eaten at any service stations, we've run in, had a wee, had a drink, not the same thing, and I've, I've topped up a little bit of diesel. I don't think we've spent any longer than 25 minutes in petrol stations over 1,134 miles. And as I said, there's 210 miles left in the tank. So my Volvo is running at 11 pence a mile and the EV is at 19 pence a mile. I can't believe that that Hyundai Kona has cost so much to run, but there's so much more that you can say about that. If you're only doing 4,546 miles in a year, do you really need to be driving an expensive EV? I can never get past the point of if you only do a few miles, you're better off with a second or third hand small petrol powered car. But I don't fully understand how the motability scheme works. If you're watching from outside the UK, the motability scheme is basically, um, and forgive me if I get the terminology wrong, in the old days, it would have been giving a car to a disabled person. 
but now the government have replaced the whole giving a car to a disabled person because you're no longer allowed to give out invalid carriages. Remember those? I think Hubnut has one, doesn't he? I'm sure he had one on his on his channel. In the old days, disabled people in England would be given a sort of sky blue coloured plastic semi-car, semi-motorbike thing to get them around. It's about motability. It's about getting you out and about if you're disabled. Those things were taken off the road and replaced with a payment that allows the government to contribute towards a car or payment towards a car or to provide a car for people who are disabled. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But what that means is if you have a disability or if you can't get around for some reason, the government will contribute towards you getting around like a grant and they'll pay part of the money or all of the money towards your monthly lease on a car. Seems like another scheme to prop up the car industry, doesn't it? But when I know more about the motability scheme, I'll be able to conclude whether or not it is just there to prop up the car industry. So this is on a motability scheme. But what's interesting about this, sorry for meandering around the point a little bit. I've had a weekend off filming videos and I'm out of practice. The, what's interesting about this is this being on a motability scheme, it's been given to someone who is disabled and I don't want to generalize but a lot of the people who are on these motability schemes don't live in gigantic manor houses where you can fit a charger so I think the reason this Hyundai has been charged so much with Shell for example is because they don't have a proper home charger now I have another video coming on this because the person that sent me these Hyundai Kona running costs also sent me a breakdown of how many times that car's gone back to the garage in 12 months. And it's a lot. This car has been horrendously unreliable. And this is a person that gets a payment from the government to keep them mobile because they depend on the car. So people who depend on their vehicles are being pushed into electric vehicles that don't work and then break. And that they don't always have the capability to charge them at home. Some more forward thinking by our fantastic paymasters. So... Just to conclude that one, I'm going to go get some sleep and then make some better videos later in the week. Would I have been better off driving a Hyundai Kona to Northumberland? Well, no, because the range on that car is 239 miles, I think. And on Friday night, I drove 275 miles with nothing but a seven minute break. There is no EV that could have done that. If you know of an EV that could have done 275 miles in one hit with a family of four, both heated seats on, the heaters on, all the charging points charging iPads in the back and the heaters and the stereo with no stop. Oh, and windscreen wipers as well because the weather was bad and all the lights on. So if you know of an EV that could have done a 275 mile real world journey, then let me know which one it is. And if you're the sort of person that's saying, Jeff, you're mad, this EV could definitely have done that, then I will contact their PR department and I will test it. And that's a promise. <laughs> That'd be really fun. So there we go. Uh, could I have done that trip in a Hyundai Kona? A car that I actually quite like. I, I, th I think they're all right looking. I hate the fact that you have to pay about £400 to have it in a decent colour. But I don't mind the Hyundai Kona. But I much prefer my Volvo. So I'll be sticking with that. Yeah. Total spend for the Kona over 4,500 miles. 859 quid. I tell you what, when we did our big Portugal road trip last year, our mileage was something similar to that, and we didn't spend anything like £859. So there we go, 19 pence per mile for the Kona, 11 pence per mile for the Volvo. Uh, my printer's not working, so I'm, I'm reading it off my phone. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, no! Yeah. It is dark now. It's like night. I really need like the toilet. I know, well, I really need to find the toilet. Supposed to know. That's the wrong one. Yeah, it's off. Jeff buys cars. Still, 
YouTube's most boring car channel.